The story begins in July 2007, with a bus on the road and our MC in it as he woke up in shock, wondering where exactly he was, and later realized that he was in a bus he took at summer vacation from Sishui County to Chuzhou in his senior year. Why am I here? he asked. Wasn't I enduring the divine retribution? he wondered, as I Chen Fan am the immortal sovereign of Beixuan, also called Chen Beixuan. I am the direct disciple of the immortal master of the apex martial arts, the immortal of Kanjing. He was taken away from earth at the age of 30 and embarked on the road of immortal cultivation, and with aptitude, he reached the retribution enduring stage after only 500 years of cultivation. He was known as a peerless genius, who was most likely to successfully detach from the universe and ascend to the celestial realm. He fought with all the tribes of the universe and won every battle. He was thus honored as the immortal sovereign of Bei Xuan, but unfortunately he fell during the divine retribution, and it was because he had cultivated too fast to establish a solid foundation, and his Tao heart could not bear it. He had given up everything for his cultivation for the past 500 years, leaving behind countless regrets. All those regrets bursted out when the tribulation of inner demon came, leaving him nowhere to hide, and now he was returned as a teenager on earth. He then sat down to calm himself down as he realized it is not the inner demon. But he really went back in time, and right now he has lost all of his supernatural powers, primordial spirit and Tao heart. He has even lost his magic treasures and weapons as it sank in that now he is just an ordinary mortal who can be easily killed even by a bullet, but then calmed himself once more as it is not so bad, and in this life he will steadfastly cultivate every stage to its best and establish a supreme Tao foundation. Blood for blood, leave no regrets, he told himself. As the bus was arriving at Chuzhou, he wondered, how long has it been since he left this city? but was interrupted by a phone call, which was his mom, and we are then shown her mom, who was a red-haired lady with a yellow skirt and a white shirt, standing in front of wide area windows, which portrayed a bright atmosphere, and then called our MC by his name, Chen Fan, telling him that his Aunt Tang is probably waiting for him outside the station, also informing him that he should work hard at his stay in Chuzhou. Chen Fan couldn't hold his tears no longer as he was happy, because he hasn't heard her voice since she died in his last life, then reassured his mom, telling her not to worry, and she must also take care of herself, and was about to hang up as he had things to do. And so he did. After arriving at the station, he got off at his stop and immediately stretched out his hands as he was glad to be back again, and returning to his youthful age, and taking in the scenery before him. And while walking, he said to himself how he was bound to go through the mortal world again, and so in this life he has nothing to fear. While in the crowd, he was stopped by the mass of men staring at two beautiful ladies, one in a pink dress and sunglasses, and another in a shirt and long skirt that was supported on her shoulders. However, the same younger girl was busy complaining to the lady in sunglasses, whom was her mom, about the MC's late arrival as she was fanning herself due to the hot weather, but mom refused her claim as it has only been ten minutes. She sighed heavily as she has been in the sun for ten minutes, and she had planned to go out to Starbucks for coffee in the afternoon and turn to the car, telling her mother that she is going inside as it is much cooler, then contemplated about how her mom even wants to set her up with the MC, but berated him as in her eyes he is just a bumpkin, saying how it's even possible while she was going inside the MC arrived, apologizing to his aunt for making her wait. They then all entered the car, and Chen Fan was at the back seat with the insolent girl, and there was silence for a while. In her head, she told herself that just as the meaning of his name, Chen Fan, which meant friend, she also just sees him that way and feels nothing more, and compared to Li Yichen and his friends, he is nothing. However, the silence was broken by Aunt Tang as she told him that Ran Ran, her daughter, is also going to be a senior as well, and he should look after her at school and he responded affirmatively as now she is as good as his sister, telling his aunt to not worry as he will protect her, but said to himself that this same girl was the one he once loved and was hurt by. But then he gradually forgot her in his past life, and her name, Jiang Churan. Then both putting up a front, with fake smiles, lifted their hands for handshake as Chun Fan told her to to come to him if she ever needs help. And the girl agreed, saying he must not forget his words when she asked, 
However, secretly she was telling herself the her father is an important government official, and her mother owns a company worth ten million, and why would she need his help? And Aunt Tang smiled happily at the fact, telling Chen Fan that they will first go to his apartment to drop off his luggage, and then head to her house to have lunch, to which he agreed. It then shifts to them going to his apartment, which was located at the lakeside community, which is near Yangi Lake. His aunt saying how it boasts very beautiful scenery and how it's close to the Ivy High School, which he will be attending at, since it only takes ten minutes to walk there, also explaining how his apartment has three bedrooms and one sitting room, asking whether the decoration was to his taste, and neither the less told him to enjoy himself and not worry about the rent, as he humbly bowed to thank her for treating him so good. Your mother trusted you with me, she said, so I'll look after you like my own son, then grabbed his hand to show him around and take him to her house to have lunch. Ranrin in the background was annoyed at the fact that they get along so well. It then shifts to the Longjing Villa and his aunt explaining that their neighborhood isn't the best in Chuzhou, and they are apart from Yangui Lake, and the most famous place in Chuzhou is the Yunwu Mountain, which is said that every morning the houses are wreathed with clouds and mist, like seas and mountains of clouds. The real high-grade luxury houses are all on the hillside of Yunwu Mountain, but I think my house is good enough. Yunwu Mountain is gorgeous, but I don't seriously dream about living there, she stated. However, he replied that if she really likes it, then he will buy her a few when he makes money in the future. And then she can see the seas of clouds every morning as soon as she gets up, which stunned her a bit as she laughed, making light of what he said as she made scenarios of her taking his mother there too and spend their years together while they go shopping and taking beauty treatments. They then finally enter the house as her husband was sitting on the couch, asking what was so funny as he could hear them laughing through closed doors as Chen Fan greeted him. Hello, Uncle Jang. Then his aunt told him to take a seat as she is going to the kitchen to get some food, and they later all sit at the table to eat, while at the same time it was overwhelmed by silence, and inwardly Uncle Jang was telling himself that he only briefly chatted with Chen Fan a bit, and he's an idiot with poor academic performance. He's just a loser and isn't good enough for Li Yikin. Chen Fan then breaks the silence by saying how he hasn't eaten a homemade dish in ages, as it's so good, not to mention that it was made by Aunt Tang herself. Aunt Tang is innocent, elegant, kind-hearted, and beautiful, he said. She is even excellent at cooking, but she unfortunately married Jiang Shanghai, a power seeker. Chen Fan, you just arrived at Chuzhou, so let Ran Ran show you around and you can maybe buy something, said by his aunt, and so he agreed. After lunch, while they were both going out, Ran Ran stopped and arrogantly told him that she had something else to do, and he should go by himself or take a taxi or something. You don't need my company, right? She arrogantly asked, while inwardly telling herself that he better not ask her for company, However, her arrogance was quickly shut down as Chen Fan didn't even care whether they went together or not and left at once. Of course, she didn't take it well as her pride was shuttered. While he walking, he contemplated to himself that the place he is going, the Yangui Lake, has the richest spirit energy around as he found a particular tree to sit next to, thinking himself that he needs to hurry up and begin to establish a foundation as there are eight stages of cultivation, including qi condensation, giantian, core formation, nascent soul, spirit severing, void returning, Tao fusion, and retribution enduring. Although qi condensation is just the beginning stage, it has three small stages, foundation establishment, profound opening, and spirit sea. The foundation stage is the very first stage of cultivation, after which cultivators can lift hundreds of pounds, run as fast as a horse, break through the limits of their bodies, condense true essence inside, draw talismans, and become capable of some magic. If so, which way should he use to establish his foundation, he wondered, and while books were flying around him, he remarked that he collected myriads of street arts over the past 500 years. He collected 13,726 ways of establishing foundations alone. Apart from his regrets, another major reason he fell during the divine retribution was that his foundation was not stable enough. And still while reaching out for a particular book, he continued, even if the foundation establishment stage is the very first stage for cultivators, 
It doesn't seem very important, yet only with a firm foundation can a skyscraper be built, and this particular book which is named The Great Way of Tao, Avoid Body Refining Arts. This specific art puts emphasis on inclusiveness and absorptive captivity, now that he can practice cultivation on the earth, where spirit energy is nearly exhausted, I must rely on various medicinal materials, treasures, and even evil and yin energy to facilitate his cultivation. After that, he closed the book to begin cultivation. Time went by with him sitting in the same position until morning as the sun was beaming with a sense of freshness. While working on his breathwork, a beam of energy was seen entering his body as he opened his eyes with a smile dawning in his face as the void body-refining art was really the number one foundation establishment way in the world, as he directly entered the initial stage of foundation establishment. And it's actually the first time he cultivated it. Clenching his fist, he stated how he cultivated the whole night, as he is lucky that the place he was in was out of the way and free from disturbance, and so to test his newfound power, he swung his fist at tree and punched it with great force, leaving cracks in his trail behind, which naturally satisfied him at the moment due to his physical capabilities. However, he was interrupted by the rumbling of his stomach, signaling hunger as he forgot that he is a mortal now, and so he needs to eat. While heading back, he came across an old man who was with two people following him, a young lady and a man. And as soon as the old man saw Chen Fan, he sharpened his gaze for some reason, leading the Mac to ask what exactly the old man wanted. However, the old man brushed it off as just a mere encounter, and Chen Fan, not paying mind to it, seemed to be distracted by something as his gaze fell upon the young lady as he noticed that she had a trace of true essence inside her body wondering if she is an immortal cultivator, however denied the notion as her true essence is too weak and the condensation is too loose. It's thousands of times weaker than a real cultivator, but she has the inner force and its quality is inferior to a cultivator's true essence power. However, his inner speculation were interrupted by the girl as she wondered why Chen Fan was looking at her and shaking his head at the same time. He tried not to entertain her inquiry as he told her that he just shook his head because of something. Else, however, the old man suspected that Chen Fan truly noticed something as he asked the MC to halt, with the bodyguard also blocking his path. The old man was truly curious what the MC had seen in his granddaughter, wondering if he could tell him the real reason for such actions. However, Chen Fan was a bit annoyed as he told him that it has nothing to do with her. Show some respect, said the bodyguard. But the old man did not relent in his inquiry as he said that judging from the way he walks, maybe he studies martial arts, then introduced himself as Wei Fu, asking the MC where he came from and who his teacher is exactly. Wei Fu, the MC, I'm not a student of the martial arts, I'm scarcely a Tao cultivator if you must ask, said Chen Fan. A Tao cultivator? The Tao sect? The old man wondered. The young girl wasn't too pleased that Chen Fan just lied to her though, which made him laugh. I'm just a Tao cultivator, and know a bit of qi condensation techniques, that's all, he said. Brandishing spears and sticks or fighting and killing are really not my specialty. You're mistaken. Well, in that case, you and my granddaughter can spar a bit and learn from each other, said the old man. And the girl, in a fighting stance, said, Come on, let me teach you something. However, Chen Fan wasn't enthusiastic about the matter, as it looked like he had to show some of his skill, and he replied that he doesn't want to bully weak women. Who are you calling a weak woman? The girl asked angrily as Chen Fan just went to pick a leaf in the tree, and in the next step fused the leaf with energy and flicked it with great force. Everyone was really worried, including the old man, who shouted at her granddaughter to watch out. However, the leaf wasn't aimed directly at her as the energy beam went past her, grazing her cheek in the process as well as her hair. The leaf struck the tree with incredible speed and force, which left the girl dumbstruck as she saw her blood on the cheek turning her head to look at the leaf that was stuck in the tree. She was shocked by the fact that someone is able to hurt people with a flying flower or leaf. The old man sighed heavily with relief as he never thought he would see such a divine technique in his remaining years, then bowed as in front of a master, his granddaughter and him were impetuous, as he pondered to himself that he never thought this boy would be an unknown master of martial arts. The bodyguard, still feeling tense, thought to himself, It is my first time to see such a skill. It was so fast that I couldn't take out my gun. How horrible! 
he exclaimed. You cut off my hair with this soft leaf and drove it into the tree? How is that even possible? She asked. It's just a little QI condensation technique, not anything special, he replied. But the old man said how it's a negligible technique to you, sir, but a miraculous master skill to us. So Grandpa Grandpa started to call him sir. You said a master can do what I did? Chen Fan asked. Yes, a sublimity master is at the prime of martial arts, far beyond the limits of mortals. He can release his inner strength and can easily kill someone tens of feet away. Being a master yourself, sir, you don't know that. It's just common sense in the martial arts circle. I'm really just a Tao cultivator, and that was nothing but a little QI condensation technique. I've never heard of the things you are talking about before, Chen said. Tao cultivator? He is really not a master of manifestation? The old man wondered. We need to win him over first. With his skill, he is on par with a master. Moreover, my granddaughter is still unmarried. Then said out loud, It doesn't matter whether you are a master or not. Judging from your accent, you are also a native of Chuzhou. I'm from Sichui County. I've lived there for 17 years, and now I came here for school. Chen replied, My name is Chen Fan. You can also call me Chen Beishuan. Beishuan was the Taoist name my teacher gave me. However, the others haven't had such names before, as the old man asked Chen Fan where exactly his master is. And he did not come with him, but Chen Fan just replied that he is not on this planet right now and said to himself, Alas, humans are unable to defeat aging, illness, or death. My comrades in arms, though I've cultivated inner strength, I cannot reach the master's level. I'll probably meet them soon since he is a mortal now. Then out of nowhere, the old man coughed heavily, leaving those around him very worried as he tried to reassure them. You've strained yourself trying to use inner strength, haven't you? Oh, you understand medicine, Mr. Chen? How did you know about my ailment? Asked the old man, and the girl interjected. My grandpa went to war when he was young, and he forced himself to use the inner strength when he had not totally mastered it to help his comrades in arms retreat. He was injured as a result. He didn't receive medical care, and because of that, he had an internal injury as time. Went by until this day, he hasn't treated it at all. Mr. Chen, since you are a Tao cultivator and can see his injury, do you have a way to cure him? He suffers great agony every time he has a fit, and modern medicine can hardly do anything for him. To be frank, our family has some power here in Jiang Bei. We will do anything for you if you can cure my grandpa. Then Chen replied, It wouldn't be difficult for me to help. It must be fate that I met you, and they were all delighted by the news. First I need to go do some preparation. Then I'll go to your house to treat him in two days, all right? And they all happily agreed and said to himself that a stoic girl like her is the most beautiful when smiling. Then it shifts to the MC been driven home by the bodyguard, and along the way Chen was saying to himself that the old man Wei Fu spoke gently. But he couldn't hide the air of a military man. He must have served in the army when he was young and must have been in a high position and said how he has always admired the soldiers who defend the country and protect our homes since he was a child. They practice inner strength, so they are his kind of people. And before he could finish his thoughts, they had already arrived as Chen Fan thanked the guy and told him that he could pick him up at the lakeside community in the evening in two days. And the bodyguard agreed also asking to exchange numbers so that he can call him if ever he needed anything. And so they did. I don't know medical skills. Then went to the shop and came out with his purchases in plastic bags as he headed back to his apartment, where he placed the purchased goods inside a magic circle and finished his statement. But I know how to refine pills, he said, as he lifted his two fingers up to conjure the magic spell, spirit condensing formation up. As light emitted from the magic circle, small spirit enhancing pill, complete. And golden pills fell on his hand and explained that a spirit enhancing pill is a kind of pill that can enhance one's primordial QI. It can be called panacea. People who are ill, injured, or weak can all take it. Since now they have a fateful connection. I'll give him another gift, he said. Then started writing something on a paper as he also received a phone call from his Aunt Tang, which he answered. Yes, it's me, Chen Fan. I want to ask a favor of you. Ran Ran wants to go out to a party with her friends, but I'm worried. Can you go with her? It won't be too long, just dinner. Perhaps. No problem, Aunt Tang, he replied. Great. I'll send you the time and address. As he hung up the call, then thought to himself, I'll do this just for you, Aunt Tang.
It shifts to the restaurant or cafe, as Ranran was with her two friends, as it showed that she was complaining to her mother on the phone about the fact that she asked Chen Fan to accompany her. And one of the blonde friend asked her what was troubling her, as it's her birthday, and she replied that her mom is sending Chen Fan here, but she doesn't like him that much. The blonde friend asks, he is the son of your mom's friend, right? The one your mom wants you to marry? Yeah, it's so annoying. Ranrin replied, what does he look like? What is his family like? Asked the blonde girl, however. Ranrin chopped her head, calling her a little gold digger, only caring if a guy is handsome and has money. The blonde girl arrogantly folded her arms, saying what was wrong in her thinking, because in this society, what use is a man without a handsome face or a rich and powerful family? The other friend, Xu Rongfei, also interjected, saying, Meng Meng, the blonde girl, is just being petty. However, if his financial condition is not good, it will be difficult, and you'll have trouble understanding each other after they get married, even though they love each other. And Ran Ran, feeling all flustered, said how she doesn't like him like that, so there was no need to worry, ugh, now I'm in a bad mood. Then entered Chen Fan as he was looking for the group of friends, whom he noticed as he entered and approached to greet Ran Ran as she greeted him back. However, his visitation wasn't welcomed by everyone as the, the blonde girl, Meng Meng intended on embarrassing our MC as she said, so you are Chen Fan? You want to go after our campus's beauty? Do you know how many admirers she has in the school? Who gave you the courage? However, Ranren stopped her from speaking and Chen Fan being the giga he is, wasn't even phased by her words. Worry not, I just came here to have dinner with her because Aunt Tang asked. I have no intention to go after her as his gaze fell upon the white-haired friend, Xu Rong Fei, as he explained that she is the one he has to keep an eye on. Because in his previous life, she died tragically, and now he hopes he can save her in this life. However, in the next second, she looked at him sharply, asking if he knew her, and why his starring. No, but I have a learned family, proficient in divination, and people say I'm a great fortune teller, he replied. Although this is the first time I've met you, I know you are an art student and will be admitted to Yan Jing College of Film and Television in the future. How do you know that I want to go to Yan Jing College of Film and Television? She asked, but the blonde girl intervened. You are a celebrity at Ivy High School. Who doesn't know about you? You, boy from Si Shui, you can't win over a girl by just talking glibly. And Ran Ran, meanwhile, thought to herself, I thought he just liked to brag, but he knows something after all. I didn't expect him to be so cocky. Xu Rongfei also wondered to herself, but I just told my mom, my ideal university last night. However, I didn't tell anyone else. So how did he know? I can't ask him more in the presence of others. He is so odd, he seems to have a kind of strange magnetism. More people then arrived outside as the blonde girl got up with excitement, calling for her boyfriend Yang Chao, saying how the party should now begin as they all went outside, and she happily jumped at her boyfriend. However, Chen Fan wasn't too pleased as Yang Chao was his biggest enemy in his past life when he was in school and loved to show off in front of beautiful girls and how he often embarrassed him. Yang Chao then asked her girlfriend Meng Meng who exactly Chen was, and she whispered in his ears to him about the situation and going off to what was said, he smugly introduced himself, saying how his family runs a five-star hotel and said how Chen Fan dares to go after their campus beauty Jiang, a.k.a. Ran Ran, also saying how he must have an extraordinary background while holding out a hand to Chen Fan. However, his inner thoughts were betraying what he was saying out loud as he was calling him a bumpkin, and how he dares to go with them in the same school. Chen Fan didn't shake his hand, though, as he just introduced himself as well. Xu Rongfei was thinking to herself how it's not good to mess with Yang Chao as there was a guy who offended him, and Yang Chao had the whole basketball team beat him up and break his leg. The guy even dropped out of school. After her thoughts, she then cast a worried glance at Chen Fan, and his only response was to smile at her, which made her turn away, feeling a little bit flustered as she caught herself worrying about our MC, also asking herself why he is even smiling, calling him an idiot who is totally oblivious. Yang Chao, being loud, bragged by announcing that they can go to karaoke, then dinner. And after that, they can hit the bar street, saying how no one's going home early tonight while his girlfriend suggested going to a new karaoke bar in the new urban district as their King's Hall is cool. 
he kissed her on the head, saying how they shall go there then, which made Chen Fan understand why his Aunt Tang was worried, as they will probably end the party at daybreak. I have to go to treat Weifu, though. I don't have a lot of time, he said to himself. The waste of the guy, however, still tried to embarrass our mech, pretending that their cars are full and laying his hand on Chen Fan's shoulder, said, how about he takes a taxi to the destination by himself? Chen Fan, however, knew that they were obviously messing with him, as there was plenty of vacant seats, and Exu Rongfei, being the kind soul he has saved him, as she called Chen over to their car, saying, oh, there is plenty of room. And Renran, who was next to her, wasn't very pleased at her actions. The same went for the blonde girl, who now had to sit at the back seat, allowing Chen to sit in front. Chen Fan was glad that Exu Rongfei was still kind-hearted, like she was in his past life. Then, off they went to the karaoke bar, where in the entrance, they were greeted by ladies in pink. Welcome back. Last time we left off on the scene where everyone was heading to the karaoke bar, and as soon as they entered, Yang Chao was already showing off his wealth as yelled for the biggest and best hall. The King's Hall is occupied by a very important man for entertainment, and he is a distinguished guest. How about you take the Queen's Hall, replied the manager. It is of high grade as well, that I assure. However, Yang Chao's lackeys were not satisfied about the Queen's Hall, as one asked distinguished guests. Aren't we distinguished enough for you? Give us the King's Hall, another said. Do you really want to disappoint our brother Chao? And chanted, King's Hall, King's Hall, our brother is king. However, Yang Chua, at the other hand, wasn't really bothered by it as he didn't want to cause too much trouble. And as long as it was big enough, then he had no problems. However, feeling the pressure from his girlfriend as well, he tried to act cool in front of everyone. As he tried to persuade the manager once more as he asked him to do him a favor, and his father runs a five-star hotel, so he would owe him one in the future. But the manager still did not relent, suggesting that the Queen's Hall is also good enough. One of Yang Chao's friends got aggressive as he went on to the manager and gave him a slap asking where his boss was exactly, which also shocked everyone, including Ran Ran, as there was no reason to cause trouble as she suggested to everyone to leave and forget about the place to go somewhere else. However, Meng Meng reassured her that if there is any trouble, the Chao's father would run to help as he knows a lot of people. Chen Fan, though, knew that it wasn't going to be so easy as trouble seemed to be brewing, which made him warn Ran Ran that it was time to head back home as he promised her mother to take care of her. However, the blonde girl take a liking to what Chen said, of course, as she thought he was trying to take Ran Ran away before the party even began, and Yang Chao took the opportunity to embarrass our MC, saying that he could leave if he wanted. However, he must let Ran Ran decide for herself, and with so much pressure on her, she just yielded to her best friend's request to stay, and told off the MC to leave and go home by himself, and inform her mother about it. Meng Meng then thanked her by kissing her on the cheek for choosing her side, and she turned to Chen Fan. Well, you heard her. Off you go, Chen. However, the ever-so-kind Xu Rongfei stood up for our. MC asking Ran Ran on why she was embarrassing him like that, and she just made the excuse that Meng Meng would be mad with her otherwise. What an ungrateful girl, Chen said to himself, as he was only trying to help her and then kept to himself as someone seemed to be heading their way, wanting to see how they would deal with the situation. We are then shown a lot of men in black who came down to access the situation, and their pack ladder was a bold guy with a scar on his face who asked angrily as to who was the one who caused trouble and dared to hit the lobby manager. Then the arrogant lackey of Yang Chao came out and proudly announced that he was the one who did it, not knowing the kind of trouble he was setting himself up to, and the bold man was happy to hear that, as he saved much time, and in the next second, he ordered the men in black to capture the guy as the boss wants to see him. The blonde guy, however, screamed in indignation, asking whether they knew he was, and Yang Chao intervened to save his friend as he was trying to come up with a solution for the problem. You dare to make trouble on the boss's turf? Guess we will have to take you to talk with the boss, said the bold guy. Fine, we will go see your boss. Just put him down, Yang Chao pleaded. The lackey who was causing trouble was now sweating heavily as he realized they were in big trouble asking Chao what to do now, and Yang Chao just gave him a false hope by saying that they outnumbered them, and there was no reason to panic. 
Ranran Ran now also began to worry once more, asking what's going to happen. But still her friend was relying on Yang Chao's father to help them. Chen Fan was just enjoying the scene from behind, smiling to himself as he wondered how Chao will handle the situation. And on they went to the king's hall towards the boss. And as they entered the hall, they saw the boss waiting for them, as he had a girl besides him sitting on his lap. Sir, I have brought them to you, said the bold guy. Hey, big brother, we want to borrow your king's hall tonight, Yang Chao pleaded arrogantly, and the boss man was now curious at who the guy was asking for his name. My name is Yang Chao, and my father is Yang Yifan of Tiansheng Hotel. Do me a favor, huh, you? Even your father would humbly call me Brother Hao when he sees me. Yang Chao was now panicking even more by hearing his name as asked once more for clarification on his real name, and the boss laughed, saying his name was Zhou Tianhao, which shocked everyone. And they began to become fearful just from the mention of his name. Chen Fan was even thinking to himself that Brother Hao is the big boss who has his hand reached out to both black and white with extraordinary background and ability. You people seem to be hoity-toity but just a second or third tier group in Chuzhou. Why the smugness? The boss inquired, and one of the bodyguards took it upon himself to knee the guy who was causing trouble earlier and said to him, you were so great, huh? However, the guy is even more cowardly now as he begged for his life. No, big brother, I'm sorry, spare me, please, spare you? Okay, chop your hand off and maybe I will spare you. On the other hand, Yang Chao was sweating bullets as he knew that things were not going to go as planned. And even though his lackey deserves it, he has to stand up for him, or he will lose his reputation. He then said out loud to Brother Hao that it was all their fault, and then apologized, asking him to not take it too far. Brother Hao agreed to his proposition as he dined with his father a few times, and he can do him a little favor, which made Yang Chao glad as he thought he resolved the situation. However, the boss had another thing in mind as he asked for the three girls to stay and have a drink with him in return which naturally shocked the girls as they were not expecting it, and Yang Chao, still playing protector, asked to be lenient as one of the girls is his girlfriend, telling him that he couldn't just leave her behind, which also made the, the boss furious at his many requests as he threw the class he held onto the ground, shouting for him to cut the crap and do as told, as the atmosphere became even more tense as everyone shrieked in fear as they could not challenge the big boss if Chu Zhou crying for their departure. The girl who was sitting on the boss's lap stood up to pour some wine and invited the girls to step forward and have a drink as the boss does not bite. Decide quickly, yelled the bold guy, which got them even more riled up. Even Ran Ren was thinking to herself that it seems like they can't avoid a little humiliation, as her father is also a respected name in Chuzhou. And he works for the government, too, thinking that Brother Hao won't do anything to her if she goes to him, and decided that she had to stay so that the others go be out safely as she gathered her courage to speak up, which interrupted by Chen Fan as he held a hand across her and told the boss that two of the girls are his friends, so he should also do him a favor and let them go. What are you doing? Are you out of your mind? It will be settled as long as I drink with him and he gets an apology, yelled Ranren which naturally amused Brother Hao as he asked Chen Fan, who he thought he was, to ask him for a favor, and he replied, I'm someone you can't afford to mess with. And Brother Hao laughed hard at his statement, You are someone I cannot offend? Is there anyone in Chuzhou that I cannot offend? Boy, because of what you said, you will not be able to walk out of the door in one piece. Which made the girls fall into despair as they thought now things were getting out of control, wondering what they should as Chen Fan might die now, not knowing how RMC is the goat. Brother Hao ordered his best man, the bold guy whose name was Biao, to kick the hell out of Chen Fan, and he happily obliged. As Biao is the number one fighter of Zhou Tianhao, he is the man who had gotten out of military prison by Zhou. His short tempered and was sentenced to prison for badly injuring his trainer in the army. He greatly contributed to the achievements of Brother Hao over the past ten years. It then shifts back to the fight as he was preparing a blow against our MC as he swung a fist towards his face, which made the ever-so-kind Shu Rongfei to worry about Chen's fate as he yelled at him to watch out. However, he wasn't phased as he reassured her that there was no need to worry. And while the fist was coming at him, Biao was bust, explaining how his fists can break a hole through a wooden wall, confident that he couldn't stop it. 
However, Chen simply blocked it with his strength, and Biao shrieked back in pain. Feeling the strength of our MC, he was surprised that he could get hurt, wondering if Chen studied Kung Fu, saying no wonder why he was so bold as he then wore knuckles behind his back. Interesting boy, let's take it seriously now. And so the battle began. Biao swooped in for a right hook. However, Chen Fan dodged it and looked to counter, saying, since the guy was being so brutal, then the guy must not blame him for being ruthless, as he countered with a powerful kick on his chest, shocking everyone. As he was coughing blood and he thumbed on the floor, Brother Howe was also shocked as his best fighter was just defeated with one blow and shouted for his other men to stop watching and just attack him all at once. They heeded the boss's orders and pulled out knives to prepare for an attack, however. Our boy wasn't phased at all as he sighed, calling them a bunch of fools as he suddenly dashed through them with great speed, attacking them one by one as they all slammed to the floor with pain clinching the areas they were damaged, moaning. He, he won? What is this a drama show? Meng Meng wondered. After he dealt with the guys, he then confidently sat across Brother Hao, asking him on how he saw him now after everything. And Brother Hao was thinking to himself that our boy could beat a dozen of his best men, saying how he has been in Chojo for more than ten years, but has never seen suck skills like that before. He still tried to play it cool, though, as he admitted that Chen Fan got some skills. But how would he fare against a gun as it's the modern era right now, and excellent kung fu skills are not so intimidating? I can get you thrown in jail with a single call, he said. On the other hand, Chen Fan was thinking to himself on whether he was really threatening him, and if so, he could just use magic techniques to kill him quickly. But before anything, our boy asked Brother Howe to first let his friends and the others to go, then they can both have fun afterwards. And he agreed, grinning about the fact that he cannot wait to see our MC squirm. The guys who came with Chen cowardly ran as if they were not the ones causing trouble, leaving Chen behind. But only one person was willing to stay behind as she was worried for our MC, the perfect waifu Shu Rongfei. However, the arrogant Ran Ran was the one who was holding her back from staying as she forcibly pulled her out of the king's hall as she was thinking that no matter how confident he is, not everything is settled by fighting. After the departure of everyone, our boy became more relaxed, as now he can even show off his magical powers. But he was the interrupted by a phone call as it was Xia Qi, the bodyguard of the old man, as he was wondering why Chen Fan was not at the pickup location since he has a checkup with the old man, and he just told him he cannot be at the pickup location now, since he ran into some bit of trouble, the bodyguard was now on full alert, as he asked our boy where exactly is he at that moment, as he could come and sort out the problem he is facing, asking who exactly is giving him trouble. Chen then told him that it brother Hao, and after hearing the name, the bodyguard then got furious as he told our boy to wait for ten minutes and he will definitely be there, then hung up the call. On the other hand, Brother Howe was still mocking the MC as he thought no one would dare to cause a fuss in his presence, even whomever the MC was on a call with. But Chen Fan just told him to wait for ten minutes. Then all will resolved as the boss guy agreed as he didn't mind, still thinking he was at the top. Oh, how wrong he was. As after some some time, there was noise outside as someone was budging into the king's hall, shouting for no one to stop him and entered. And soon as he did, the ever so confident boss Howe was now cowering in fear, as it was Brother Chi, the old man's bodyguard, asking Brother Chi what he was doing there. But Brother Chi didn't pay much mind to it first as he inquired about the well-being of our, and he just responded that who would even dare hurt him. And after the inquiry, he turned his attention to Boss Howe, who we will now call Mr. Howe, as it was shown who was boss now. He shouted at Howe for daring to cause trouble for our boy as he is the old man's friend, which naturally shocked Howe as the Wei family is powerful, and he was also relying on them continuing to elaborate that it was even the old man himself who sent him to pick Chen Fan for dinner, asking whether he thought he was lying by saying that, and he hastily denied the fact of not believing him, knowing he would be doomed if he said otherwise, and immediately bowed in respect to our MC apologizing for not recognizing that our boy was the old man's friend, which also shocked the girl next to him as it was the first time he sees Brother Howe bowing to someone, as she always thought Brother Howe had a backer, and it turned out the backer was our boy's friend now. Then Brother Chi asked the, the MC on how they should deal with the situation. 
However, since our MC was so benevolent, he decided to spare Brother Howe, since the bodyguard was familiar with him and directly told Brother Howe that if he wasn't satisfied, then he is always ready for a fight any time. And Brother Howe got intimidated as he wouldn't dare to even think about it as they then later departed, which made Brother Howe feel relieved at the fact that they left. After that, the scene shifted to the house of the Wei family, and as soon as Chen Fan got out the car, he was immediately impressed by the big yard as the later entered the house of the Wei, as he was greeted by the sight of the old man and the granddaughter, and casting a glance at our MC, the girl was a bit surprised that our boy was not holding any medicinal supplies or equipment, since he came to treat his grandfather. However, Chen Fan just replied that his treatment doesn't really need any acupuncture or manipulation therapy. And after that, he was seen handing a piece of paper to the old man, as the old man was also wondering what he was gifting him. And as he looked at the paper handed to him, he was immediately stunned and lost for words for a short period of time, as her granddaughter was also wondering what was getting the old man all riled up as he suddenly bowed at our boy for the gift gifted to him, thanking him for his kindness, pledging that he will never forget it. However, Chen was humble as always, as he just told him to not mention it at all, as he got his injury defending the country, and he can't turn a blind eye now that they have met. And as the girl was trying to help the grandfather stand upright, she asked why he was giving such a salute to our boy without any reason. However, the old man did not try to explain to her as he asked the MC to do the honors for him, as he accepted and started explaining to the girl that her grandfather's injury consists of two parts. One is that he forced himself to use inner strength, then got injured and has not been treated, so his injury is in his lungs and cannot be healed. And the other reason is that there is a problem to the inner strength he produces, which hurt his lungs. The slight injury he circulated every time has accumulated into a big one, so you are saying there is something wrong with my lungs as well, asked the girl, theoretically, but your cultivation is too shallow to reach such a degree, and the girl was relieved that now he has to thank her shallow cultivation, then thanked our boy. Comment down below if you think our boy got a new waifu. The old man then said that when he first learned his martial arts from his family, they also mentioned the problem. However, he thought it was luck to have inner strength arts to practice at the time, saying that who cared if it would injure his lungs or not, and patting his granddaughter on the head, he said that if she hadn't wanted to learn the martial arts so badly, then he would have taken the secret of the defective arts to his grave. However, Mr. Chen gave him the booklet, which contains the revision of the defect even many levels higher, which also stunned the girl as she does not remember teaching him their family arts. So how did he figure out the way to revise it? And the old man responded by saying that that is what's great about a Master of martial arts, as he can just tell by looking at him and immediately know about it roughly. However, Chen Fan reminded them again that he is a Tao cultivator. The old man still continued, though, saying that with such abilities, he is as great as a master. After that, Chen Fan took out the pills he had prepared, explaining that they are spirit-enhancing pills, and he must take all ten of them on time. Coordinating with the revised arts and he will be okay. But unfortunately, the ingredients of the spirit-enhancing pills are extremely rare, and how they can even bring back the dead, saying lung injuries are definitely not a big problem. But by saying that, it kind of angered the girl a little bit as she furiously grabbed out the pills out our MC hands, as she thought that he was bragging by saying how can pills bring back the dead to life, saying it is just a made-up fairy tale. However, Chen didn't try to even convince her much, as it was her choice to believe him or not. After that, the old man then asked our boy if he could at least tell them about the ingredients so he can ask his men to collect them for him. And Chen agreed, as he knew no one could refine them anyways but him. Then he took a brush upon his hands and began listing the ingredients needed as he was also explaining to us that the pills, like spirit-enhancing pills, must be be refined with exclusive methods of the immortal realm. And a layman couldn't make it even if they tried a million times. Old Man Wei later also confirmed, after looking at the list, that the materials do seem hard to collect even for their Wei family. But still, they will try their best. And after everything said, Chen Fan wanted to inquire about the martial arts realm the old man kept talking about, which the old man Wei was expecting telling him to ask away. 
but it was not fully disclosed at that moment, as the scene shifts to the MC on the car as he was recalling what the old man was saying about the martial arts realm, and his explanation went as follows. The inheritance of martial arts has a long history, and legend has it that originally it was a key refining technique. But he doesn't know much. After all, for him, practicing martial arts is just a family inheritance and an interest, which was revised, upgraded, and developed into all kinds of different inner strength arts, also attack and defense art. The last most prosperous time for the martial arts realm was the end of the Ning Dynasty and the beginning of the Qing Dynasty. When experts and masters came forth in large numbers, later guns and cannons rose and martial arts began to fall. Now, master-level martial arts have become rare. There are three stages of a martial artist, outer strength, inner strength, and sublimity. Most of the practitioners now are in the first stage, very few in the second, and as for the sublimity master with gang key protection that can defend against firearms apart from Chen, he has only just seen one, and it is said that there is another level above the sublimity, but no one has ever seen it. And Chen was saying to himself that whatever the old man said has nothing to do with him anyways, and with a certain key on his hand which was given to him, which was rather nice and convenient as he felt he deserved it since he has the confidence of a retribution enduring immortal sovereign. Then the scene shifts to the Wei family once more as the girl was inquiring to her grandfather about the key the old man gifted to our boy as it is a key of the top-level house of the Yunwu Villa. Since it was a present from the richest man of Chuzhou to the third uncle, and he gave it to him, while accepting that Chen Fan did indeed heal his injury, but was it necessary to give him such an expensive house? However, the old man was very serious as he told the girl that she doesn't seem to understand anything, as the revised arts given alone is priceless, which made her realize a bit. And moreover, she has no idea what it is to be a master of martial arts. However, she was still insistent on asking what was so great about a master of martial arts, thinking it made no difference, asking if they can resist bullets, cannons, or even missiles. But the old man just patted her on the head and told her that it is not as simple as that, as Chen Fan is on par with the military legend Yamantain. And even though he is so young, they must definitely keep him on their side. Yamantain? The girl wondered, oh, I see, Chen Fan is destined to be extraordinary, saying that while looking up with light beaming around her, creating a heartwarming picture. The scene then shifts once more to our MC, while he was being dropped off at his destination by Brother Tuai, as he followed his instruction according to his arrangement, they are not going to Yunwu Villa. So at the moment they are at the lakeside community, which satisfied Chen Fan. And while he was stepping out of the car, his phone rang and the person behind the phone call was none other than Ron Ran herself, who wanted to invite our boy for dinner. Welcome back on the previous video. We ended at the part where Ran Ran was inviting our boy for some dinner by also enticing him with fact that our waifu Shu Rongfei and Zhong Yumeng will be there. However, our boy being the Giga Chad, he is immediately denied the proposal and quickly hung up as since he was not interested in the slightest, which left the girl shocked and got infuriated as he just hung up on her, calling him a show-off, also saying he is stuck up. After all, however, after calming down, she suddenly became flustered as she thought he was kind of charming when he was fighting all those guys, so he was quite heroic. We then have a time skip to three peaceful days after as we are shown our boy at his apartment, sitting in a lotus position while meditating, describing that after a few days of closed-door cultivation, he has reached the peak of the initial stage of foundation establishment, just a step away from the middle stage. And after that, he got up and took his beg, seeming to be heading somewhere, and of course it's where everyone aren't to please go, and that's school. Also, while walking on his way, he was busy complaining about how he didn't want to go to school, and he is only going because of the sake of his mom. Then we are later bereaved about the high school he will be attending, Ivy International High School, which is a private exclusive school. It is equipped with top hardware facilities, faculty, and enjoys a great reputation as well, and students there either have excellent grades or have a super rich family. Chen Fan's class was located at the third year, class nine, which upon entry was bussing with chatter from his fellow classmates. 
Within them, there was a particular guy with blue hair whom was sleeping and seemed to be woken up by our boy's presence, towering over the guy, which led him to ask Chen Fan if he was looking for anything in particular, but our boy did not respond. However, the blued hair guy realized that our boy was now going to be the guy sitting next to him, which disappointed him a little as he thought that it would maybe be a beautiful girl sitting next to him. After that, the bell rung, which signaled the beginning of class, and then entered the class teacher, who announced the new transfer student, asking for him to introduce himself. And our boy boldly stood up and introduced himself. Hello? Everyone, my name is Chen Fan. As he kept it short and brief, which brought contempt to himself as the classmates showed little. Interest to him, calling him ordinary. Plain looking. Boring. Not worth knowing poor and powerless. Immediately as he sat down, the guy next to him started talking, calling his introduction too simple, saying, how could he attract girls if he doesn't put any effort? However, he let go of the matter and began to introduce himself as Zhang Tang Q, nicknamed the nightclub prince as, there isn't a nightclub in Chuzhou that he doesn't know. The MC, however, already knew his name, which straddled him a bit, but then thought to himself that his reputation precedes him then asked for the ears our our MC as he wanted to tell him something. While Chen Fan was busy thinking to himself that not only was he his desk mate, but also his best buddy in his past life, and when our boy was down and out, only he was there for him. As we get a little flashback to the old-looking Jiang, who was an alcoholic as bottles of drinks filled the table, while our boy was explaining to us that back then the guy stabbed someone for a girl— and thus was imprisoned for seven years, ruining his whole life as the two of then could only drink away their sorrows. And the old Zhang was smashing one of the bottle on the floor in anger, as the thing he regretted most was ruining his life for a girl, wishing that he could live again to change his misdoings, and back in the present moment Chen Fan was clenching his fists, saying that in this life he will try his hardest, G2 protect his friends. As our boy was busy making promises to himself, his friend next to him was also wondering why he was not saying anything to his rumbling and R just responded that he was listening which made the guy talk even more as he now started boasting about showing his real ability by informing Chen about the beauties of their school, which they call bells. And even though the girls in their class are not bad, there is the prettiest among them all, and that is their class monitor, Chong Wei, a purple-haired beauty, and she will be the host of their campus evening, as only our waifu Shu Rongfei and Zhang Churan, a.k.a. Ranran, Ran, are slightly prettier than her. And he continued explaining about Shu Rongfei, saying she is already a minor celebrity as a model and even acted as a supporting character in a TV series. And it is said she can afford a BMW with the money she makes in a year, outstripping 99% of students in China. On the other hand, Chen Fan was chuckling to himself, thinking about how his friend would react if, he told him that Shu Rongfei and him nearly became lovers in his previous life, but don't even think about the class monitor. She doesn't even want me, let alone you, said Jiang. And to himself, Chen was thinking that he has not changed at all, as he is still full of hot air. It is Si Ying Xia she fancies, but the guy is too proud to even look at her, Jiang said. And then on entered Si Ying Xia, who we will be calling Sai from now on. The guy was the head teacher's favorite student, as he once won a prize in a national Olympic math competition and was then recommended for admission to Hua Qing and Yanjing universities. And now he is a treasure to the whole school. Even after entering the class late, the teacher didn't even make a fuss about the matter as she just welcomed him inside, as we are now shown the class monitor who seemed to be proud and excited from seeing him as the classmates were praising him, calling him handsome more than any other idol, which angered Jiang as he is also a forward for the basketball team. As the cheerleaders of their school are all pretty girls who love him and the coward Yang Chao, However, the sea fancies our beloved Shu Rong Fei, and as always, our boy wasn't too impressed, which led Jiang to ask what Chen actually thought of the guy, and our boy just replied, Really, 
I don't see anything special about him. However, in his head, he was thinking that in his past life, C was definitely the most enviable person to all boys of the school, including himself. But in this life, he is nothing in his eyes and far less important than his friend Jiang. However, his so-called fiend thought that he was conceited, as even though he also does not quite like him, he really is awesome. As time went by, the bell rang once more for the end of class for the beginning of lunch break, as in the next second, the class monitor approached our duo's desk, informing them that the school's basketball team will have a training game during lunch break, and the two of them must help carry the drinks, as she also departed immediately without even considering their thoughts. Which frustrated Jian, as he knew that the girl was only trying to show off in front the guy named S.I. as she ordered them like dogs, and the scene then shifts to the basketball court which was buzzing in noise and the most attention was fixed on the two boys, S.I. and Yang Chao. Chen Fan was also surprised by the praise they received, which again annoyed Jiang mainly because the guy named S.I. was even ignoring. The class monitor, and without knowing that our boy knew the waste man, Yang Chao, he continued to give entail about him, telling him that he is the team leader and his father is the CEO of the Tiansheng Hotel, and someone once offended which caused him to lead the whole basketball team to beat him up, and they ended up even breaking his leg, which naturally caused the victim to leave school, and school even let the matter pass. Jiang also, wishing he could be as prestigious as him one day. We are then shown the class monitor doing her best to please the guy named C by providing him with water to drink, and in the next second, turned her head to someone asking them rudely at what they are doing as he should hand water to the other plates, and he did, which turned out to be our boy, who threw a bottle of water to Yang Chao, who was surprised as Chen greeted him, long time no see, and Yang Chao just nervously agreed, and not wanting to prolong his stay there near Chen, he immediately grabbed the hand of C in order to get away from him as far as possible. But since the named C was oblivious to everything, he wondered about the new transfer student and his friend Jian, thinking they're nobodies, which Yang Chao reacted to asking them if they knew Chen. However, the class monitor interjected saying Chen Fan was just a new kid who transferred to their class, calling him a poor loser, and also further saying that one could order him around, and Yang Chao just stared at quietly as he knew otherwise from the previous encounter. The slander, however, was overheard by our boy, which infuriated him. After the lunch break, we were taken back to the classroom once more as the class monitor came again to their desk, thinking she could control our boy. Oh, how wrong she she is. She began to order him to go and carry things for the team, as they are going to have a match tonight. However, Chen Fan denied as he was not a simp, which stunned the girl a bit, as she was not expecting refusal. And in Chen Fan's mind, he was thinking back to the fact that she talked crap about him behind his back at the basketball court earlier, and he was only trying to help at that time. And the girl, trying to confirm once more, asked whether he is really denying her request, and our boy stood up to confront her, telling her that he is indeed denying as it is the school team's match. So she should ask the sport department to do it instead, saying, What does it have to do with him? You are really not going? She asked. No, he replied, and the girl was thinking to herself that she has a rich family and is the monitor, also thinking that she is superior to him like a princess, and only boys as excellent as Sai can make her slightly lower her head, and a plain and unimpressive transfer student like him dares to turn her down. Do you think the match is not important at all? She asked. However, this time our boy just ignored her by just opening a book in front of her, which obviously triggered her. And hearing all the commotion, a huge figure appeared. You dare disrespect the school team? He asked loudly with furry in his tone and demeanor. However, our boy wasn't phased as always as he called his name Ji Xing Yu, who we would be calling Ji from now on, the sports commissary, a substitute of the school basketball team. And as our boy was saying all this with slight hint of mockery, which caught the guy named Sai's attention, 
and the guy Ji was furious from Chen mocking him as he seemed to be raging. However, Jiang tried to defuse the heated conversation, saying the guy should not take what Chen said seriously, as he is just newcomer and he knows nothing as then patted our boy's shoulder, telling him that it is just carrying some stuff, so they can do it together. However, our boy did no relent on his decision, as he told Jiang that he could do it if he wanted, however, he is not going anywhere. You got some nerve? The last guy we had, like you got his leg broke and I cannot wait to wipe off that smug look on your face, said the guy G and Chen without fear, just smiled and told him he could try any time. The other students, though, overhearing everything, were busy discussing how members of the school team are all tall and strong, and they made it to the final eight in the Jiangnan Province High School League last year, winning honor for their school, so they swagger around in the school, and almost no one dares to offend them. Remembering that someone once pissed off Yang Chao, who led the team to break the guy's leg and the guy Ji was among them. And the other guy said the our boy unexpectedly has a temper, but the other just called it overconfidence, which was confirmed by another as he asked whether Chen Fan did not consider his own ability before challenging Ji and the class monitor. However, everything was interrupted by the teacher who appeared in the classroom and began telling everyone that there is a Taekwondo class this afternoon, and if anyone wants to take part in it, then they should hand in the clothing and lesson fee, and they are participating, and if not, then they are dismissed and are free to leave, which was perfect for our MC since he wanted to leave because of boredom. And as he stood up to depart, his way forward was blocked by the guy G who told him to not leave yet, trying to convince him to attend the Taekwondo class if he dared, but our boy was not interest, as he replied that it was none of his business. However, at that moment, the guy G then wanted to provoke him by asking if he did not have any money, and if not, then he could tell him, as he can pay for Chen and the class monitor. Also added that if he does not want to participate in class activities, then he must not blame her for telling the teacher in the influence of his term assessment, which finally got to our boy as he just smiled and agreed. Then we are shown the gym, which they briefed us on, as the Taekwondo gym is very gorgeously built and it is about the same size as the basketball gym, and it is a big class as not only class nine of the third year attend, but also many classes from all the grades attend this class. After all, that the scene then shifts inside the Taekwondo class, as everyone who attended was geared up, and the forever talkative Jiang was there too. Explaining to our MC that the Taekwondo at their school is very famous, as the coach has won the second place prize of the national game, and he is very competent. While putting his hand on our MC's shoulder, he told him that the guy G probably dragged him to the class in order to embarrass him, telling our boy to just ignore him. The teacher then arrived as everyone gave him a salute, bowing their heads to the sensei, as the teacher then clapped his hands to inform everyone to warm up first, and then practice against each other as he then called the guy C to demonstrate first alongside the guy, G and C gladly bowed to begin the sparring match, while on the other hand, Jiang was busy explaining to our boy how the guy C is a red belt, second only to a black belt, which represent danger and attack. As one cannot reach such a level without years of practice, the coach then began the match between the guy C and G, with C making the first move by executing a flying spinning knee kick, which was being overly praised by the spectators, whom were mostly females, as they thought his movements were awesome. And as fast as the match began, it also ended with the guy C being the victor as then the coach announced that now everyone should practice with each other according to the arranged pairs. However, of course, there had to be trouble, as the guy G went forward and asked the coach on whether he could challenge someone first before they began with anything else, then called out Chen Fan to come and play with him since he was acting quite smug at lunch break, which made everyone else in the dojo wonder why the guy G, a blue belt, was challenging. Chen Fan, a white belt, as everyone then began to speculate that maybe our boy angered the guy, G hence why he was challenged. However, our MC was just smiling at the guy, 
G's attempt at calling him out as if he knew it would turn out that way. And then the coach asked the guy G again if he really was sure on wanting to challenge a white belt. And turning his head to our boy, the coach informed him that due to the huge gap between their levels, he has the right to refuse. But obviously, the guy G was not going to let that happen as he tried to provoke our MC, asking him if whether he lost his nerve since he was so smug earlier. However, without fear, Chen Fan stood up and went forward towards him while also informing him that he cannot perform Taekwondo. But the guy G, being all confident, just told our boy to use whatever skill he can do, leaving the others to anticipate what was about to occur at that moment. Well, does that mean you have to fight with me? Asked Chen. Are you afraid? Don't ever brag if you are afraid. Ivy High School is not somewhere a bumpkin from a little county like you can swagger around. Then Chen Fan responded. I'm just afraid you can't withstand my attack. And with that, Ji began to shout out loud, I can't withstand your attack. And while spreading his arms wide, telling everyone that Chen Fan said that he cannot afford to stand his attack, how ridiculous is that? Let me show you how I beat you, he shouted. Then Ji started showing off his kicks, asking Chen Fan if he could see how much he is better than him. However, our boy just nonchalantly responded by saying that his moves are showy but not practical at all in battle, which naturally angered everyone attending the class since he was disrespecting Taekwondo in everyone's eyes. And with that fact, the spectators started rooting for the guy Ji to teach Chen Fan a lesson as he was courting death which filled the guy G with confidence as he then began rushing at Chen Fan and throw a body kick, which was easily dodged the attack after dodging another kick. He began to belittle his attacks as he then began to prepare his own counterattack, raising his leg above for an axe kick, which the guy G realized. However, his realization was too late as he tried to dodge, but because the kick was fast, he tried to block it instead. However, our boy's axe kick was way too powerful as it slammed him down on the floor, creating a loud bang, which naturally shocked everyone as in the next moment the spectators started berating the guy. G for being too weak as he couldn't even beat Chen Fan, the new transfer student as it really seemed that the new student was not bragging earlier and he real has skill. While the class monitor was also thinking to himself that the guy G boasted to her and now could not withstand a kick from Chen Fan, calling the guy G a shameful loser. While at the same time, the guy C went up to his unconscious friend, asking if was all right, then stared at our boy, asking him why he had to hit the guy. G so hard since they were all classmates, becoming even more angrier. But our boy just responded by saying that he was the one who provoked him, asking him what would have happened if the guy G's attack landed on him. As surely if the guy G would hit him, it would have been a fatal attack. However, the guy C not listening to our boy just came to him even closer, saying that since he has such strength, how about he accepts his challenge? Which also began to worry the class monitor a bit, calling his name. However, the guy stopped her by showing his palm to her from saying any more as he prepared for a fight, while also thinking to himself that Chen Fan's kick was really amazing as the speed and power cannot be from an ordinary person, saying he has been training in this sport since childhood and since he has worked hard for more than 10 years, so he cannot possibly lose. You want to fight with me? asked Chen. You know I will not stop if we start right, he stated. The crowd, meanwhile, were also busy discussing the kick Chen Fan delivered on the guy G as they said it was not so impressive, and it was just a little fast and powerful, while favoring the guy named C as he has received so much praise from black belt masters, and another confirming as they wanted to see who will lose now between our boy and the guy C as another, also called Chen Fan, a braggart. As they believe the guy named Sai is the best, the coach also then informed them that since they are both students, they can fight if the want. However, they must not go too far. Welcome back. Last time we ended at the point where the coach was informing our boy Chen Fan and the guy named Sai that they could fight if they wanted to. However, they must not go too far and stop where they should. 
However, his inside thoughts were betraying him because he was still annoyed at the fact that Chen Fan called his teachings showy but not practical, and telling himself that his favorite student will definitely teach him a lesson. Before the fight began between the two, the mood between them was heavy as Chen Fan, then began to tell the guy named Sai to go on ahead and attack, which made the guy named Sai obliged, as he was not going to stand on ceremony, and in the next second he leapt in the air with a flying kick. While it was coming, our boy also acknowledged his attack a little bit, saying that he is not bad, comparing him to Biao, except for his lack of experience and his fan of girls were also infatuated by his awesomeness in the kick executed, which was also praised silently by the coach, calling his kick the fourth level of a black belt, and with that kick alone, the guy C is bound to win. However, our boy was not that easy as he just smirked and then blocked his kick with only one hand which shocked the guy named Sai, asking how it was possible for him to block it so nonchalantly, thinking to himself that why is Chen Fan so awesome, but did not think for long as he delivered another kick aiming for his heed. This time, however, Chen just brushed it off with a single hand, which left the guy named C to Lo's balance at the same time further infuriating him as he began to throw a furry of multiple kicks, and all of them was just all slapped away by our boy but the guy C not noticing his inferiority, he continued kicking with each and every kick slapped away. The guy Sai then realized that he was getting nowhere with his attacks, which led him to take a huge step back to access the situation, and in doing that, it caused Chen Fan to smile happily, saying that he has kicked so many times, so for once, how about receiving one of his punches, and after saying that, he made a punching stance, which the teacher instantly figured out, as he had a bad feeling about it, since it seems dangerous, as he tried to warn the guy named C. However, Chen's punch was already coming with great speed, which led the guy named C to subconsciously block his face, to cover the so-called idle face. But it was a mistake in his part, because Chen Fan's blow landed on the guy's stomach, as if... He wanted the guy to spill what he ate yesterday because it even created a loud boom. Also, it was shown that before punching the guy, he released some of his kai, which forcefully threw him back a few meters as he slammed down on the floor, which caused some silence all around, and the person who cared the most for the guy named C came forth to help him out, which was the monitor, the first one to hurry by his side, calling for his name in a frantic manner since she was so worried, and the guy named Sai was busy coughing on the floor, and our boy reassured the monitor that the guy is all right and he will only just be tired for a while, which naturally angered the girl as she was grinding her teeth in furry, since Chen was the one who hurt her beloved idol student. But our boy, being the Chad he is, just turned his head and looked at the others, loudly asking them if anyone else wanted to challenge him. However, no one made a sound since they were no all scared. And with that being the case, he pointed at the guy named C and told him once more, showy but not practical. And unless he can learn real kung fu from renowned masters, he will still not be a match for him even after another ten years of practice. After spitting some game to the now-defeated C, he decided to leave with his hands behind his back like a true Chad among gigas, and among the way he put his hand on his friend Jiang, telling him for them to go out for some afternoon tea. And in Jiang's head, he was thinking that our boy Chen was really wicked. However, he jumped in happiness as they left, while also thinking to himself that no wonder why our boy Chen did not bat an eye at the guy. Sai, as the guy named Sai can't even take one of his punches, thinking that Chen Fan definitely isn't ordinary. After a few days, everyone in school was talking about Chen Fan, as also multiple girls wanted attention from him as they were surrounding him for the fact that he defeated the guy, C, and at the same him, back a few meters, as he slammed down on the floor, which caused some silence all around, and the person who cared the most for the guy named C came forth to help him out. Meanwhile, we are shown the guy C and the people also surrounding him, for different reasons, however, as they were cheering him up by telling him that he is a lot better than Chen Fan at sports, study, and piano, and so he is even more handsome than him. But the guy C was not responding at all to any of them, as they asked him if he was all right as he was. 
Too immersed in his thoughts, however, in the next moment, a hand was placed on his shoulder from his back, which turned out to be the waste man, Yang Chao saying that he saw the sea has absent-minded these days, asking him what was the problem. But the sea just responded by saying that it was nothing. Really, however, one of the people around him told the waste man Yang Chao that the problem is the transfer student. Chen Fan in their class who beat up their big C in the Taekwondo gym and now struts around in their class, the class monitor also saying that he is just a loser who only knows how to fight, saying he can't match the guy. Sai when it comes to school work, family and appearance, so naturally he loses in everything compared to him. And the words now began to uplift the guy. C. However, his face was still showing the darkness that was in his heart, and a menacing look, he actually admitted that Chen Fan is really better than him at fighting. But he doesn't believe that he will lose to him in other things. That's right. How can you lose to him? Tomorrow is the day of the welcome evening. The final stage is yours. Give your best performance and show that boy who is boss, said the class monitor, encouraging him further. At least the waste man, Yang Chao, knew his place as he was mentally telling the guy, see that Chen Fan is someone who can stand against the big boss of Chu Zhou, Brother Hao, and so what can the guy named Si really do to him? But then he continued to think to himself that it was better to not tell him about the information as to not make him even more upset. The scene then shifts to our duo Jiang and our MC outside, who were discussing about the welcome evening tomorrow as our waifu Shu Rongfei will be surely be performing, as the welcome evening was delayed for half a month due to the military training of the first years. However, the beaten up Ji walked past them as if looking for trouble and asked Jiang on whether he still liked Shu Rongfei, but also saying that she belongs to the guy named Si. However, our Chen corrected the guy by saying that he heard that Shu Rongfei only likes him as an ordinary friend. Well, she would not like you anyways, the guy Ji responded back. But our boy being the Chad he is just said that it would be hard to tell for sure. And Jang also standing up for our boy shouted, that's right. Why can't she, Brother Fan, beat you up the other day? So are you really asking for trouble again? However, the guy Ji knew best, and so he just ignored Jiang and left at once. The next day at the welcome evening, everyone was gathered at the theater hall to witness all the brilliant performances with our duo not being the exception, as they were also among the audience. And after some while, Jiang was really impatient to see Shu Rongfei on stage. However, he did not have to wait long, as after some performances, the hosts, who were the class monitor and some other guy, announced that the performance they all been waiting for will be underway as the beautiful Shu Rongfei will be performing a solo dance, calling her the Swan Princess, which caused the audience go in an uproar as they were waiting long, as in the next second the stage went completely dark, leaving a single spotlight to highlight the performance as it was bound to be good. And for the music, it was the guy named C, who was on the piano as he was dressed in all white, which matched the beautiful Shu Rongfei's dress, since the guy always accompanies the belle Shu Rongfei each time she dances. Then out came the ever so beautiful waifu, who was dressed like a majestic swan princess of ballet, with her hair tied up perfectly, skin glowing like the moonlight in a dark OBS, creating a bright and gently atmosphere. As she was twirling and twirling like one who dances with the wind, not to mention the cultivating poses, and as if not cultivating enough switch final and last dance, she simultaneously untied her hair that created a breathtaking scene for everyone to feast their eyes upon, which naturally excited everyone as the audience went into an uproar, booming with cheers from fellow students, and the creepy guy, C, took the opportunity to take advantage of the moment and quickly grabbed Shu Rongfei's hand, and they began bowing down to the audience, thanking then the process for the support. And as soon as they did, Shu Rongfei also quickly retracted her hand due as to not cause any misunderstandings. However, it was a bit late, as some people in the crowed thought that they looked perfect together and make a cute couple but our Shu Rongfei wasn't too fond of the opinions everyone was throwing at them, which made her a little upset.
After the brilliant performance, we were then shown Jiang, who was still praising Xu Rongfei, calling her his goddess, saying that she has a temperament that is as good as a professional ballet dancer, and also continuing to say that the guy named Si wants to take advantage of his so-called goddess. Chen Fan, however, didn't really want to keep listening to his rumbles as he stood up to leave, and while up, he was thinking to himself that he was satisfied to see Xu Rongfei's solo dance once again. But his train of thought was interrupted by Jiang as he was informing Chen Fan that their campus Bele Xu Rongfei was coming their way. And alongside her was the class monitor and the now creepy guy Si, who was chatting up our waifu, which naturally discouraged Jiang as he thought the guy Si was winning her over. However, our boy, not wanting any trouble, just simply told Jiang that he was departing and went the other way. But he was then stopped by a voice. Alas, our great master Chen is leaving so early, without greeting the two heroes of the welcoming evening, which naturally caught the attention of our MC, and the voice was coming from the class monitor. However, not knowing that Chen and Xu knew each other in the, the next second, Xu Rongfei called out our boy's name loudly with a questioning tone, and after finding out that it was really him, she ran with full speed to our boy with extreme excitement, and our boy seeing her opened his arms to embrace the joyful Zhu, and then they hugged warmly, creating a bright and dazzling atmosphere between them as they also looked at each other with warm and fuzzy smiles. However, after some time realizing what she was doing, she immediately blushed and pulled herself back, Feeling all embarrassed, then tried to explain to him that she was just happy to see that he was all right after the previous encounter, and our boy warmly smiled, then thanked her. But after that, Shu was just overheated by the encounter and was boiling in embarrassment, so she ran away from the situation, as the crowd made it even worse, since they were surprised and discussing the fact that Shu Rongfei actually hugged Chen Fan the one they called an ordinary transfer student, and another said that he must not be ordinary since he defeated the guy C with a single punch. But another told the person to keep it down, since the guy named Sai was already raging, and looking at his face, it was as if one was about to blow up. The next day, while heading to his class, it seemed to be calm until he opened the door to enter, and as soon as he did, the classmates looked at him with amazement, as they already thought that he was just a bumpkin. But it turns out that he is not only good at fighting, but also has the charm to attract the campus beauty. Jiang then jumped happily at our boy, saying that he was not, expecting what happened last time to happen before him. However, our boy just tried to explain everything by asking if his friend would believe him if he said there was nothing between Shu and him. But his friend, of course, did not want to believe it, saying that he badly embarrassed the guy named C last night, calling it brilliant as his face turned bright red and froze to the spot as no one could get him to move for ten minutes. However, in our MC's mind, he was thinking how everyone misunderstood the situation. Then looking out the window, he continued to tell himself that, how could he possibly fancy Shu Rong Fei as she is waiting for him after all? And it seems we won't get to know who exactly she is. Well, it looks our beautiful waifu Shu Rong Fei won't feel our boy's love after all. Such a shame. Getting back to the story, there were three guys discussing the fact that they think Shu Rong Fei is having a relationship with the transfer student as she even hugged him in front of the public and turning to one guy who seemed to be getting some screen time was busy thinking that Shu Rong Fei is not even attracted to Chu Ming Hui or the guy named Si. So how could she possibly fancy an ordinary transfer student? But then a blonde guy interrupted his thoughts, calling him president and the so-called president, then dismissed the two guys, and while leaving outside, he continued with his thoughts, asking himself if he should tell Cho Ming Hui, as he is the national defense student who is still receiving special training in the army, and after all, he is not only the son of the commander of the military region, but also the number one admirer of Xu Rongfei, and with that he started laughing with anticipating.
We then get a time skip to half a month later at night as our boy Chen was in a lotus position, cultivating his energy which had blue aura that was surrounding him as he was thinking how his cultivation which has been in a bottleneck since the first day of school is finally starting to move today and it seems that he will enter the middle stage of the foundation, also saying that his energy became denser, transforming from blade-like to a fiery form. Usually, one cannot absorb the essence of the sun and moon during the foundation establishment stage, but the void body refining arts is too powerful. If one has enough cultivation, they can even refine the void and absorb it as energy while also taking out some pills. He thanked his luck for saving a couple of small spirit. Enhancing pills, he then ate them, and at the next second his energy core was filling with more power and energy, which excited him for the feeling he was experiencing. As more energy was rushing more and more violently, ripping his clothes in the process as he broke through the middle stage of the foundation establishment, and looking all jacked, he stood up, showing off his abs, as he was now thinking that he had to get some money to refine pills, and just as if fate itself willed it. He was interrupted by a phone call, and as he answered it, he found out that it was Brother Howe, who was glad to hear from our boy as he would like to invite him for lunch tomorrow, which was perfect for our MC, who was exactly looking for ways to making money, which he naturally agreed to. The following day, he met Brother Howe, who was with Biao, his loyal bodyguard, whom greeted the Mac at his arrival, and as he sat down, Chen Fan asked who roughed up Biao as one of his arms seemed to be broken, but he jokingly said he knew who did it, saying it was an internal injury that his kick caused, and Biao just awkwardly smiled and Chen Fan did not allow any response as he asked Brother Hao if he actually want to ask for his help for anything, which Brother Hao agreed to, saying that he has a minor trouble and continued, We are family, so I will be frank with you. There was a rival of mine years ago who fled overseas. Now he has come back and destroyed my place and also tried to kill me. A gang fight? I'm not the police, said Chen. It was not a fight for power. That man has learned Kung Fu from God knows where. He wants my life and he is very determined to kill me. So it is no use calling the police. How are his skills compared to mine? asked Chen. Amazing, said Brother Hao. I have never seen such a master. He might even be better than you. Oh, said our boy, and in his head, he was thinking if the guy is an inner strength fighter, and Brother Hao nervously replied that the guy asked to meet him on the Lake Heart Island. If you can help me out, I will give you a large reward. A hundred thousand? asked Chen Fan. No, a million. The extra is my apology. In Chen Fan's mind, however, he knew that Brother Hao was not being sincere enough, as he did not want to pay him beforehand, so he would still like to see this particular inner strength fighter. But out loud, he just replied that everything was good. In the next second, Brother Hao stood up in hurry, as if someone was visiting. He then exclaimed that, Master Guo has finally arrived as he quickly rushed to meet him, which led Chen Fan thinking that, as expected, Brother Hao did not only invite him alone for help, as some men in black robes with red belts appeared, and among them was a leader, whom Brother Hao naturally introduced our boy to, and his name was Master Guo of the Wei Sheng Kung Fu School, and he is the number one martial artist in Chuzhou. You are hiring a teenage boy exclaimed the arrogant Master Guo. Won't he be killed? Brother Hao, however, tried to convince the master that Chen Fan is also a very capable fighter, while he was also sweating heavily due to the questioning. This enemy is very powerful. He can't be dealt with by an ordinary kid, shouted the so-called master. Oh, why? Then the so-called master just responded to him by first sitting down calmly and drinking his tea. He continued to answer the question. I wonder if you have heard about inner strength fighters. Inner strength fighters? Asked Biao, who seemed to know what the so-called master was talking about, as his voice was trembling a bit. The so-called master then interjected, If he did not have inner strength, how could he have broken your arm with a single punch? His strength has exceeded the limits of human bodies. 
The bodyguard Biao then remembered something by telling a story that when he was learning the fist position, he heard that there was rarely one inner strength fighter out of 10,000 students. Someone like that can kill you before you are even able to shoot a gun. Isn't that a bit of an exaggeration? exclaimed Brother Hao. But the so-called master wanting to demonstrate something, he told them to look carefully, as he then placed his hand on the table and then released some of his internal energy, which left a heavily rooted handprint on the table, which led Brother Hao to ask if he was using inner strength. Also, the bodyguard Biao was wondering what would have happened if he was to use that on a human body instead, as it would have caused an incredible amount of damage. However, our boy, as always being the supreme being he was, was naturally not impressed by the performance. As it was boring for him as the punch he gave to the old willow after establishing his foundation. That day was much better than what was shown. I dare that guy to mess with me while I have Master Guo at my side, said Brother Hao happily as he had to do some bootlicking service. He then continued to say that Lin Bao, who was the enemy of the bootlicking Brother Hao. Last time we were at the part where Brother Hao was busy with his bootlicking service, as he was telling us about his enemy Lin Bao, who fought with him for turf years ago but then lost and ran away but he did not expect that he would return with kung fu skills. And while giving the so-called master an envelope, he said to the master that what he was giving him is the advance payment, and there will be more after the task is completed, then how will introduce him to the third master way? Ha ha ha. That's is so kind of you, replied Master Guo, as Chen Fan meanwhile was thinking to himself that getting acquainted with the Wei family is what matters most to Brother Howe. After all that, they then headed to the meeting spot, as the ever-so-arrogant Master Guo told Chen Fan that no matter how good he is at fighting, he cannot resist the punch of an inner strength master. After hearing that Brother Hao was also now a bit worried, as he was looking for confirmation to our MC. However, our boy just replied that he had the responsibility to protect Brother Hao now, and the matter ended there. The inner strength, power, and other things are just an exaggeration, said our boy Chen. Boy, you are very ignorant and arrogant. If you come with us, prepare to die, stated by the so-called master. After some time, one of Brother Howe's subordinates came with some news. While our boy was thinking that at least Brother Howe was not a fool for hiring multiple fighters. At the other hand, Brother Hao was trying to satisfy the so-called Master Guo by telling him to first rest as to build up strength and energy. However, the so-called Master informed everyone that the enemy was coming, and with the infiltration of the enemy bodies were scattered all around him, leaving them in a puddle of blood in his path, causing a big commotion and not believing it. Brother Hao stated that there were a dozen of his bodyguards outside, so there was no need to worry. However, before he could finish what he was saying, the leftover men came running inside, screaming in fear for the powerful enemy outside and witnessing the spectacle. Brother Howe worried a little bit, saying that he really underestimated Lin Bao. We are then shown the enemy Lin Bao, who was a red-haired guy with some cool-looking clothing. He then uttered, Why, Brother Howe, aren't you happy to see an old friend? He then entered the building with the confidence of a king and how he remembered the scar and bullet wound he gave him that year. As they are, still there. I dare not forget that moment, he said while touching his scar and then continued. I desperately practice martial arts this year, just for this moment today. Feeling scared, the guy Brother Howe tried to play it cool and gathered courage to tell the guy Lin Bao that he should not think that he can do anything he wants just because he has cultivated inner strength. And hearing that the guy Lin Bao was a little surprised, oh, you know about inner strength. Then why don't you give up struggling? Asked Lin Bao. However, the ever so arrogant Master Guo intervened in the matter and introduced himself. I am the owner of Wei Sheng Kung Fu School, Guo Wei of Xing Quan. May I know who your master is? but his words were not really appreciated by the guy Lin Bao. Cut the crap. My master lives abroad. Come and your death will be swift. Humph, <laughs> you have gone too far, 
replied the so-called Master Guo as he positioned himself in a fighting pose to begin his attack, and so he did. However, his attack was swiftly dodged by Lin Bao and the other strikes that was sent in his way, creating after images due to the speed of their movements, unable to be perceived from the naked eye, causing Brother Hao to exclaim in surprise at the power of inner strength fighting, and to himself he was also thinking that Master Guo had better win, as he is afraid he won't get to see tomorrow. The battle between the two then halted, and the so-called Master found himself backtracking due to being overwhelmed. With visible damage caused by Lin Bao and the so-called master, while blood was trickling down his lips and sweating heavily, finally spoke up, I didn't expect Lin Bao would have entered the final stage of inner strength. I truly underestimated you. However, the guy Lin Bao became even more arrogant and said, How could a frog at the bottom of the well know the vastness of the world? And began his story. I was very lucky to become a disciple of a master of martial arts. I served as a mercenary overseas, risking my life for years, and that is why I entered the final stage of inner strength so fast. Disciple of a master? asked the so-called master in a worried manner. No wonder I lost, since it is a good reason, and hearing that Brother Howe really began panicking this time, as he was feeling the pressure, and since his job was not done yet, Brother Howe began his work and did what he did best, which was bootlicking as pleaded for his life at his enemy. Brother Lin, now that you are back with wonderful Kung Fu skills, it is a great time for you to show your capabilities. Let's divide Chujo equally, shall we? He asked nervously, and the guy Lin Bao, coming ever so closer, began to laugh. Ha ha ha. You think I still want your shabby property? However, the bodyguard Biao tried to protect his master as jumped in between them, yelled at the guy, Lin Bao, to stay back. However, to the enemy's eyes, Biao just seemed like an ant as he just swatted him aside, sent him flying across the room, and as if wanting to scare Brother Hao even more. He placed his hand on his shoulder, which did its job, then told Brother Hao that he has more territory abroad than he does here then began to tease Brother Howe once more, saying that he is just an ignorant frog at the bottom of the well. Being fully scared now, Brother Howe said that if the guy killed him now, then the third master would not spare him. The Wei family? asked Lin Bao. Do you think they will go overseas to catch me? If so, you would have already been a king, and hearing that Brother Howe immediately squirmed and yelled that he surrenders, asking Lin Bao to spare his life, and while he was busy begging for his life, clinging hard on Lin Bao's leg, the so-called Master Guo, on the other hand, was busy thinking that making one wrong step could mean the end of the whole game. Lin Bao was really now amused at the fact that Brother Howe was now begging for his life at his feet, then began to laugh. Ha 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 ha. And out nowhere, a voice was heard. Zhou Tian Hao, I will save you if you give me 10,000. And Lin Bao, wanting to know who exactly said that, yelled out to the speaker, and the speaker turned out to be our boy Chen Fan, who then continued, If you can promise me that, then I will get that Scarface here out of your way. Ending his speech while looking domineering and calm. Who are you? What big talk? said Scarface and our boy Chen Fan, just confidently told him that he is just at the final stage of inner strength, and so maybe his master is the one that deserves a fight with him. But hearing that made the Scarface Lin Bao more enraged, saying that Chen Fan is insulting his master, asking if he was courting death, and as veins kept popping in his head, he continued to say that he will rip off his head and feed it to a fish in the lake. The defeated guys in the background also thought that Chen Fan was arrogant and out of his head, especially the so-called Master Guo. However, our boy being the powerhouse he is, began to demonstrate his power as then started accumulating his energy and inner strength, which was majestic and gold in color, wrapping it around his hand and fingers. He began shaping it into his desired form, and with the phrase, I have a sword to slay the world. The sword, Chi truly manifested as he, 
The just drew a line on the floor, with it leaving a scorched line dividing him and his opponent. Seeing everything that was unfolding in his eyes, he truly now became shocked, calling the act that was performed by our boy Chen inner strength releasing. He then began to wonder if Chen Fan was a master of martial arts, saying that there should not be a master like that here, and realizing his dilemma, he immediately knew what he was in store for him, so he did not want to linger any more and run. He turned the opposite way run for his life as he knew he was in danger, his former arrogant face turned into absolute horror and fear, saying to himself that there is a sublimity master at his very peak of martial arts, as he could kill ten people of his level at once. He then turned his head at our boy Chen Fan once more, saying that he was so young and powerful, so he needs to inform his master how this matter. However, our boy wasn't just going to watch him escape like that, as he told him that it was too late to flee now, as he then began conjuring even more energy, causing Lin Bao to curse as he knew our boy was about to do something terrible to him. It turned out boy was preparing for an attack as inhaled the golden energy surrounding him, exhaled it towards the guy Lin Bao, with tremendous force, as he spew out multiple golden energy in a form of piercing-like object, as they then combined into one and pierced through the guy Lin Bao, immediately knocking him out as his eyes rolled to the back of his skull and a face showing utter defeat. Meanwhile, the so-called Master Guo was also shocked. The guy he looked down upon was now showing formidable strength, as he can even realize his inner strength, even capable of killing one with but an exhaled breath, saying that our boy Chen really is a master. Finally realizing that he was nothing in front of our boy Chen Fan, and continued to say that this teenage boy who looks only 16 or 17 years old and still in high school should be a sublimity master at the peak of martial arts. Meanwhile, the ever-so-timid brother Hao finally realized that the battle was over and still in shock was shocked that our boy Chen Fan actually won. Then, began laughing out of relief, then somehow became arrogant once more as his enemy was lying on the floor. Ha! I could drive you away before and I can still kick your ass today, said brother Hao as he was basking in the glory he did not create. And from his back, Chen Fan appeared, spooking the now arrogant Hao, as he told Brother Hao that Lin Bao just passed out, also informing him to be careful not to kick him awake, and hearing that he hesitated a bit, but the triad to play it cool, and now calling our boy Master Chen, said how he was rejoicing that he did not kill Lin Bao. And our boy Chen agreed, saying that Lin Bao is an inner strength at the final stage after all. So how could a mere breath alone kill him? As it can only knock him out at most, Chen Fan then kneeled down to his body and did something on the body of Lin Bao, as he then informed everyone that he has now broken Lin Bao's kihai, saying he will now leave the guy, Lin Bao, to Brother Hao now. Which delighted Brother Hao, praising Chen Fan for having miraculous skills. The arrogant so-called Master Guo was now not so arrogant anymore as he was also praising Chen Fan, calling him a great master, then continued saying that breaking the guy Lin Bao's Chi Hai can prevent him from using his inner strength. Our boy Chen Fan then explained that he used an exclusive technique to block some of his acupoints to disperse his inner strength so that the inner strength cannot be gathered. The acupoint pointing skill? Asked the so-called Master Guo, a real master indeed. Chen Fan then outstretched his hand and asked for the ten million that was promised to him, since the job was now done. Brother Hao then smiled with joy, saying that it was no problem at all, and in fact he will even double it to twenty million, so immediately when he gets back, he shall send it, while also rejoicing in his heart, that it's worth any amount of money. The defeated Lin Bao then started talking. I admit you defeated me today, but if you kill me, my master will definitely avenge me. However, his threats were nothing to our MC, 
as he was delighted by that fact, saying that he hasn't seen a real master, and so he hopes that master won't disappoint him. And as he said that, with so much confidence, even the people around him were impressed, especially Biao, the bold bodyguard. The scene then changes to that same night as per boy Chen Fan was heading home and at the same time was clutching his chest in pain, as he explained that the technique cost him a third of his true essence, and it was just to frighten Zhou Tian Hao. Then came the next day in the morning as the MC was busy meditating, since he really needed to improve his capabilities as soon as possible, and in the next second, he was interrupted by a phone call from the girl Wei Zi King, which also surprised our boy a bit, since the girl was actually calling him, and as he began to answer the call, the girl on the other side was informing Chen Fan about the auction, and hearing that the MC was really interested, then asked if she was really talking about an auction, which was confirmed by the red-haired girl, and then explained that this auction is actually a cocktail party, and it is held to provide a platform for communicating and expanding social network, while the antiques that are to be auctioned are mostly mysterious things. And what's more, it's said that there will be a mysterious magic equipment to be auctioned, so I think you will be very interested. And hearing the word magic equipment, he was indeed interested, while the girl then agreed. Also explaining that it is said, the magic equipment has the miraculous functions of protecting the household, bringing good luck and blocking. The MC really confirmed that he is indeed interested a little bit, and after agreeing on attending the girl way, asked whether she should pick him up. However, in his head, Chen Fan was thinking to himself that if the girl Wei Zi King picks him up in a luxury car, then he will become the focus of attention in the school once more. So with that in his mind, he obviously refused. But she did not really mind as she gave him the address as he will get there himself. They both mutually agreed, and in case the girl told him that he could use her name to enter the auction. We are then taken to the school as the class monitor was still sucking up to the guy named Sai by telling him that they should go to the auction for relaxation, as for him to forget about recent matters and the other guys around him also agreed, as one had some invitation to the cocktail party. It's a high-end party held by the Fangsheng International, the most top-level company in Chuzhou, said the girl and the guy G also agreed saying that there will be mysterious antiques to be auctioned, and the now gloomy guy, C, agreed. On the day of the auction, at the auction house, Chen Fan was a bit astonished the moment he got there as it appeared that there were quite a few rich people in Chuzhou. As there were many luxurious cars around and coming closer to the entrance of the auction, Chen Fan just informed the doorman who stopped him for invitation that he came here and was invited by Wei Zi Ching, who said to give her name when entering, and the doorman did not bother any further as he allowed for him to enter, since he was already informed about the matter, since he is the friend of the Miss Wei. As soon as he entered the cocktail party, everyone's eyes were on him, wondering who exactly the guy was, as they began to gossip, saying that our boy was improperly dressed, another saying that they did not know whose child he is, so they must not offend him for now. While wandering around Chen Fan was that the auction has not begun yet. Also, the girl Wei Ziging is not here yet, so since he had a lot of free time, he began heading to the food stall at the table, thinking to himself that he is still a mortal, and so he needs to eat, so he should get something good to eat first, since he was not busy. And while in the process of choosing some food, someone from behind called his name out from behind, and hearing a familiar voice, he turned his head to be greeted by the waifu Shu Rongfei, making our boy Chen Fan wonder what was her purpose of being there as he did not expect it. She then replied that she came there with Meng Meng as they heard that there would be many mysterious auction items, so they came there to have a look, then asked the MC in turn who he came with, also asking if he wanted to buy something too. However, the conversation was interrupted by the ever-so-arrogant tone that was also familiar as the voice asked, buying with what money, 
and the voice, of course, came from Ranron, who continued to say that he cannot even afford a lobster dinner, let alone to bid to bid for anything. And our boy Chen Fan sarcastically said that she was indeed right, as he does not have money to bid for anything and only came there just to eat the food, as it is not bad and the desserts are very good. Joking about whether they wanted to try, which amused our waifu as she was smiling from listening to him, while Ranron, on the other hand, was bitter as always. The scene of them together caused a commotion, getting people's attention as they became even more curious about our boy's identity since he had high-end girls surrounding him. Who on earth is that guy? They said, so close. Isn't he Shu Rongfei's boyfriend? No idea. He is not from our circle. He is a student from Ivy, International High School and comes from Sichui County. He is reputedly very good at Kung Fu. Really, how come? A guy from out of our circle dares to pick up beautiful girls here? Meanwhile, outside the auction house, a guy named Chu arrived. And in his arrival, the only thing he was asking about was Shu Rong Fei, as he asked whether Shu Rong Fei will really be attending the auction party, and he was reassured by the butler. Inside, the guy Chu's friends were busy discussing about how if Chu was present at that moment, then he would be definitely teaching our boy a lesson, since he is busy talking with Shu Rong Fei. And the other agreed, as the guy Chu once led a group of people to beat on of Shu's admirers so badly that he couldn't walk for three months. Their desires came true. I guess as in the next moment, the guy called Chu entered the cocktail party with full confidence and hands in his pockets, imposing a powerful air about him, and one of his blonde friends rejoiced as he thought things were about to get interesting. While our boy Chen Fan was busy making Shu Rongfei laugh and giggle, surely he could have made it clap and jiggle. But it was not to be as the so-called Guy Chu came along and inserted himself in between them, asking for Shu Rongfei, telling her that he needed to tell her something. And his demeanor worried the girl as she then asked on whether they couldn't just speak where they were. However, the guy Chu was still filled with arrogance as he told my boy and ran Ron around Shu to leave them at once as he wanted to have a word, making the, the bitter girl ran ran nervous. However, our boy Chen was no pushover in the slightest, as he asked him why they should actually listen to him, which caught the guy Chu's attention, turning his head towards him, asking who exactly is speaking, as he just saw our boy folding his arms, showing confidence, as he told him that he is what he think he is. And so what? Hearing everything, the guy Chu had wide grin on his face, then began to say that he had heard of him, that he is good at kung fu since he even beat the guy named Sai, and continued to say that he should know that the guy named Si's taekwondo is just a kind of showy dancing performance and nothing more, which our boy Chen Fan agreed to as he was also saying the same thing while sparing with him, but thinking that Chen was now afraid the guy Chu turned away from our boy, looking at Shu Rongfei once more, and forcefully told her to come with him as he really wanted to. Say something to her. Last time we ended at the part where the guy Chu was forcing himself onto Shu Rongfei by trying to forcefully grab her hand, making the girl pull away from him as she then retreated behind our boy Chen Fan's back, also asking the guy Chu on what exactly he thought he was trying to do, and our boy Chen also didn't stand on ceremony, defending her by telling the guy Chu that he was not welcome there, so he should leave at once, which left the guy Chu feeling enraged as no one dares to speak to him like that, and twitching with anger, his thoughts were to only teach the insolent guy a lesson, so he shouted loudly, telling our boy Chen to get lost as he attacked him with a palm attack, thinking he would crash Chen Fan. However, as if nothing happened, our boy just stood there and replied for him to get lost instead. And seeing no effects, the guy Chu tried to threaten him with his image. Boy, you really want to stand against me? He said. And our boy just replied that, so what if he does? The guy Chu did not shut up, though, as began telling him. Do you know who I am? 
I've been trained in the Army since I was 12 and was recommended for admission to the military school at the age of 16. I've probably touched more guns than you would ever see. I have fought the most elite special soldiers one-on-one. -on -one. So what? said our boy. You dare to touch me? Meanwhile, on the other hand, the guy named G was running towards his boss, the guy named C and the class monitor, as he saw someone that he wanted to inform him about, telling him to guess who he saw, making the guy C wonder also, getting impatient. However, not wanting to delay any longer, the guy named Sa guessed who it was, as he was telling the guy, G, to not tell him that he actually saw Chen Fan or something. But he was right, as the guy, G, confirmed that, exactly. Saying that Chen Fan and the guy Chu are actually about to fight at that moment while Xu Rongfei and others are there too. Which surprised the class monitor telling them that Chen Fan probably snuck into the party, and now that the guy Chu was there, then he will surely humiliate our boy Chen Fan. Looking forward to the spectacle, they all headed to the way to the commotion, wanting to have a look, and so they went, while the guy Zhou was also wondering in his head whether he will finally rid of the grudge by seeing Chen Fan getting embarrassed by others. The commotion that was being caused by the duo actually drew in a large crowd as everyone was wondering what was going on and began speculating, isn't that Chu Minghui? Why is he here? This boy is actually going to confront Chu Minghui head on. Looking at Chu's face, it seems as if he wants to kill Chen Fan. Ran Ran then spoke up, Chu Minghui, this is the cocktail party held by Fangsheng International, not somewhere you can play around. Wherever Xu Rongfei goes is none of your business. However, the arrogant girl Ran Ran was ignored by the guy Chu and spoke with Chen Fan, telling him that he is the first person who has had the nerve to challenge him like this, and so he will let him know the gap between them. Really? That's good then, replied our boy as they seemed to want to battle one another. However, voice shouted out to halt, stopping them both from any further actions asking what exactly what was happening, and it turned out to be the manager of the party, who was still asking at who dares to mess up the cocktail party of the Fang Sheng International. The crowd also did not keep quiet as they were now talking about how the manager Zhu was coming, thinking that someone will be in trouble now. Fang Sheng International has an enormous influence in Chuzhou. Wondering what they would do about the matter, as they wanted both Chen Fan and Chu Minghui to get kicked out, I am annoyed at the sight of them, they gossiped. Seeing the manger, the guy Chu gained confidence once more and greeted, Good evening, Manager Zhu, I'm Chu Minghui. He pointed at our boy Chen Fan and informed the manager that he suspects that Chen Fan does not have an invitation and is definitely crashing the party, and so he asked the manager to please kick him out immediately, and hearing everything the manager did, not even hesitate to take the orders from the guy Chu, knowing what might happen, I dare say, that he is a fool of manager. Filled with ignorance, the manager went up to our boy Chen Fan, and reaching out his hand, he asked the MC for an invitation. However, our waifu, being a simp for our boy Chen, tried to stand up for him by saying that, why should they show their invitation? Just because of what the guy Chu said as he himself, if is not even showing his invitation. The manager then just replied that the guy Chu is the friend of his boss continuing to say that he doesn't know Chen Fan, as he is the one who wrote all the invitations himself, so he would really like to know who exactly Chen Fan is. After hearing everything, the girl Xu Rongfei thought to herself, as she was also wondering the same thing, too. To where exactly he got his invitation, as only the upper class in Chuzhou were sent invitations, so how did he get one? The manager then continued, seemingly angry at this point, yelling at Hai to show his invitation if he really has one, and if not, he will call for security. However, our boy feeling no pressure just nonchalantly replied that he doesn't pose as one, which naturally made the guy Chu happy as he was grinning with delight, feeling victory was within his grasp as he shouted that he was indeed right. 
and the manager also joined in the shouting competition, asking our boy on how he gained access into the cocktail party if he did not have an invitation. Hearing everything that was going on, even his so-called enemies rejoiced at our boy being humiliated, and the class monitor was looking forward to how poor boy Chen Fan was going to deal with the situation. As she really found everything funny, the guy G was also busy saying that if he is not from their circle, then he must not even think to come at such parties, otherwise he will make a fool of himself. While the guy C, on the other hand, was also thinking in rage that his love rival who beat him up at Taekwondo is now really a little thief, sneaking into parties, thinking how disappointing it was. The bitter girl Ran Ran at this moment was feeling angry towards our boy as always, except for our waifu Shu Rongfei, who was worried at this point. Chen Fan then spoke up, saying that he doesn't have an invitation. However, he was indeed invited and continued that if he does not believe him, then the manager can go to the usher and check it out. Invited? asked the manager. Only our boss and his son have the right to invite someone to this party, which made the guy Chen Fan wondering in his head that Wei Ziqing is definitely not the boss of Fangsheng International, thinking he was in a pinch now. Manager Zhu, please, pleaded Shu Rongfei. However, the now bold Mander ignored her plead and called for security, which made the guy Chu grin even more, telling our boy Chen Fan that they were not at the same level, since he get him kicked out of the party with only a single word, asking how boy Chen on what he was going to do about it. Thinking our boy was really defeated now, even the crowd joined in, humiliating our boy Chen as everyone was yelling at him to get out at once. Get out! Get out here! Get out! They chanted. Witnessing everything that was occurring, you could see that Chen Fan was really not. Enjoying what was going on as his face was shrouded in darkness, his enemies were also delighted by the sight, rejoicing in their momentary victory. Before anything could happen any further, a voice out nowhere pierced through the whole room with a question of who exactly they are daring to kick out the party as everyone shattered at the commanding tone, and it turned out to be none other than Weizen King, who was indeed looking rather splendid, and her appearance at the cocktail party shocked everyone. As most were admiring her, calling her the princess of the Wei family, even the bold manager who was opening his mouth earlier was now shocked, making him panic as he began asking on why the girl Wei was there. However, hearing his questioning tone, Wei Zi King got annoyed at his boldness, asking him if she was not the lady of their company, as she then continued to inform everyone that Master Chen is her guest, and they actually dared to try and drive him away, even daring to call the security on him, asking exactly what they thought they were doing. After listening to everything the girl Wei said, the manger indeed knew that he was in deep trouble as he tried to make excuses for himself, saying to the lady that he did not know that our boy Chen Fan was invited by her, but she did not immediately reply to the manager as she first tried to ease our boy's anger, asking for forgiveness for the late arrival, as she did not expect that they would be so ignorant. However, our boy Chen was laid back as ever and confirmed that it was all right as he just thought of them as a bunch of ridiculous clowns making noise. And inside her thoughts, she was thinking that even her grandpa tries hard to please Chen Fan, and yet now he was humiliated by a small manager in person. So if Chen Fan was to walk away in rage, then it would definitely be the loss of their Wei family to offend a master of martial arts for no reason. Our Chen Fan then spoke up directly to the girl Wei. He seemed to have a problem with me, wanting to get rid of me. The manager, Though hearing that tried to make excuses one more time, however, before he could even finish, he got a hot slap from Wei Zi King telling him that he did not want to hear any excuses, as she will then advise his boss to fire him. Which completely crushed the manger as he tried turning to his accomplice, the one who began the commotion in the first place, which was none other than the guy Chu as he thought he was going to be helped. But 
The guy Chu, who was at this point nervous, was standing there fearfully, at the same time was thinking that it's amazing that the proud Wei Ziqing was now apologizing to Chen Fan. The guy Chu then later tried to say something as he lifted his hands to Wei Ziqing, calling her sister. However, he met an angry Wei Ziqing who shouted at him, asking him what he wanted to say at this point, as she really knows his personality. However, the guy Chu at this point was boiling with rage as raised his voice, blaming Chen as he said that it was him who stole his girlfriend first, but yelled at him to shut his mouth, saying that the army has made him even more belligerent, since a gentle person like Chen Fan was upset thanks to him, and continued to say that she will be informing to uncle about this issue in person, which was the guy Chu's father leaving him feeling even more defeated at this point. After she finished with the matter, she informed our boy Chen Fan that she will show him around the exhibition first, as he agreed by also saying his goodbyes to the beautiful Xu Rongfei. After they had departed, the guy Chu was left behind embarrassed, did not know how to control his rage, and decided to take out on some poor glasses, smashing it on their floor, and stormed out in anger wondering how Chen Fan got no way Ziqing. The people in the background did not also let this moment go as they were talking about how Wei Ziqing's attitude towards Chen Fan is unusual, thinking that maybe he really has some backers or patron. Our waifu Shu Rongfei, on the other hand, was still in a daze, daydreaming about our boy Chen, which was interrupted, by the forever bitter Ran Ran, by placing his hand on her and told her that he was gone, so she shouldn't just stand there stupidly, as she was also occupied in her heed thinking about whether it's really where Chen Fan gets his confidence from, as he was helped by the Wei family, especially the princess of the Wei family of Zhang Bei. While Xu Rongfei was also wondering at how many secrets Chen Fan still have in him. The scene then shifts to the duo Chen Fan and Wei Ziqing, as the girl was still trying to apologize to Chen Fan for what happened on behalf of the Fang Sheng International, since it's her uncle's company. However, Chen Fan wasn't the slightest affected by everything, and he should be thanking the girl for helping him instead, leaving the Wei Ziqing wondering why a master of martial arts is so tolerant of such things. However, she knew that it could not be that easy as she felt uneasy about something which prompted her to persuade Chen Fan even more for Chu Ming Hui, since he was the one who offended him. However, Chen Fan was not willing to just let go that easily, which caused the girl get even more nervous as she knew nothing. Good was going to come from not resolving the issue as she turned towards Chen Fan, and raised her voice with excitement, pleading even more, asking for forgiveness in his behalf, and Chen Fan reluctantly agreed, however, also said that if the guy Chu does something like that again, then he won't even think twice about sparing his life, and having no choice, the girl just stood there with relief and agreed to the compromise made, and thought to herself that she would have to discipline the guy Chu after everything. We are then shown the person who was going to be their guide through the exhibition hall, who was introduced by the girl as Uncle Lin. The Uncle Lin thanked her, calling her his lady, and began guiding them through the many items stored at the exhibition, as he began explaining that all the antiques exhibited were collected by the third master, way with great care, and they are from all over the world, as we shown a beautiful blue gem, explaining to us that it is the heart of Blue Sky Diamond from South Africa, which they say can bring amazing good luck to the wearer. And the other item was an ancient compass belonging to a Feng Shui master of the Ming and Qing dynasties, and the jade was found in the tomb of a noble from the Han dynasty, adding that those were all proud collections of the third master Wei. And the girl, also feeling proud, exclaimed, That's right! and turned back towards our boy Chen Fan, asking him what he thought about the items before him. However, our boy was not even the slightest of being impressed as he just called them all ordinary antiques and herring that the guy Uncle Lin frowned and looked at our boy with squinted eyes, feeling disrespected. Ordinary antiques? He thought to himself, I shall show you some real treasures then. 
He then announced to the Lady Wei Zi King and Chen that there were even greater treasures. He then guided them to the supposed great treasures, and along the way, there was a glowing orb that caught the attention of the girl, Wei Zi King, as she asked the uncle if it is a magic equipment that will be auctioned, to which the uncle agreed to, as he then began his inner monologue, saying, looking at the glowing orb, feels like getting inside a whirlpool, and for an ordinary person to look at the item for the first time, they won't be able to wake up from the trance instantly, just like Wei Zi Ching did, and with that, he is afraid that Chen Fan is probably lost. However, his mistake was to take our MC for a normal person, because before he could even finish his inner victory, he realized that our boy Chen was not even affected by it as he was perfectly all right and not even phased. We are then shown the treasure in its glory, which was shining and dazzling as the uncle began informing us about it. This treasure bead was worn by a Tibetan living Buddha, and he never took it off. It has the function of adjusting the magnetic field of the human body, condensing feng shui, bringing blessings and exorcising evil spirits. He then continued saying that the boss went to Tibet for it himself, and hearing its description, the girl Wazy King even became more excited, thinking that it was extraordinary, making the Uncle Lin to also get filled with pride, and turned to our boy asking him that he seemed to be looking down on Master Wei's collection, which made our boy Chen just nonchalantly respond that the items do seem imposing, but it's not a real magic treasure equipment which naturally triggered the old guy Uncle Lin about what Chen Fan had said, making him shout, You insolent boy! Then show me a real magic equipment. However, our boy Chen explained it to them instead. Magic equipment? A real magic equipment kiss something that can summon wind, rain, and so on, and the item they are displaying can do nothing but attract people's minds. And not believing what our boy said about magic equipment summoning natural elements, the old guy Uncle Lin told our boy Chen that what he said is nothing but a myth. As for sure, what he said can't be true making the girl Wei Zi King also eternally agree to the statement the old guy Uncle Lin was saying as she thought the glowing orb was indeed miraculous to her. However, our boy being the Chad he is, did not try to explain any further as he will demonstrate to them something. So he went closer to the glowing orb and made a hand gesture, which then began to suck out the light it was emitting, asking them what the thought about the item now and seeing what happened. They were both shocked, as there was no light anymore. And girl also. Wondering how the weird, attracting force has disappeared, making the old guy Uncle Lin wonder the same. And they did not have. To wonder any longer as Chen Fan explained to them that the item was just collecting spirit energy from its wearers, and now, however, he has just erased the lingering energy. With the explanation, it then dawned on the old guy Uncle Lin that our boy Chen Fan really has some skills and definitely cannot be underestimated. Meanwhile, after he had explained everything, he started looking around for something he could collect himself and seeing nothing so far. He really thought that he would be going home empty-handed this time around. And immediately after saying that, something seemed to have caught his eye. And witnessing everything, the girl Wei Zi King seemed to be interested in what Chen Fan was looking for exactly, and ahead of them was a small jade rock that was lying under a white cloth. And as they went closer to it after looking at, at it a bit, the girl Wei Zi Ching thought that it was nothing special. And the bead, which was the glowing orb, seemed to be much better to her, but of course our boy Chen Fan did not just pick it for no reason, as he had a wide smile on his face, informing them that he really wanted that jade, so they should name their price. And the girl Wei Zi King, in thinking that it was really nothing, she told Chen Fan to just take it, if he really liked it that much. And our boy did not hesitate in accepting the free gift out their kindness, and so he really owes them a favor. Meanwhile, the girl Wei Zi Ching was busy thinking how Chen Fan was even expressionless when her grandpa gave him the villa, while the piece of plain-looking jade won over his favor, which surprised her, 
So wanting to know more, she began to ask him if there was anything special about the ancient jade. And our boy Chen Fan just replied that after polishing and forging the jade, then it will be a real treasure of magic power, making the both of them shocked about the fact of hearing the word equipment forging and seemingly happy now. Our boy Chen Fan wanted to depart since there was nothing more interesting to see there anymore, and so he did. Along the way, he met up with Shu Rongfei and Ran Ran once more, who asked him if he was back, and he agreed, also caressing Shu Rongfei's hair, thanking her for defending him again, which left her blushing. He then departed the cocktail auction party. After returning to his house, he immediately pulled out his jade rock, thinking how he did not think there would be a jade chalcedony on earth where spirit energy is running out, thinking it was really fantastic. As he then began forging the jade stone, also thinking how it is the first precious material he has found, and so he must use it well as such good luck may not come the next time. The jade then began to emit a bright, foggy light, spreading into multiple beams. However, he didn't do anything to the jade yet, and meanwhile he was speculating that he could sell it at an astronomical price, but he won't, as he could also forge a jade amulet for his parents, sister Anne, and Chong. And if he can successfully forge an equipment, then it will be as good as having an extra life, which cannot be measured, as then began feeling nostalgic he was asking for a girl named Chong to wait for him, who we don't know yet, and it was probably the girl he loves.